this palette. Stella. Oh my gosh, I love her so much. Tuition for it. Freaking Stella, man. What are you doing over there? And and she had oh, Stella. Stella, hey, get out. Stella, do you know that I love you? Good morning, everybody. Morgan here. Welcome back to Paisley Acres. Um, it's been a rough few days. I'll get into that a little bit here in a second, but um, I'm really excited to be out here in the garden because it's springtime and there are some projects and some problems that I need to solve here today. So I'm going to take you guys along with me. Hopefully you'll be able to learn something and be inspired to come back to the garden and grow some stuff for yourself. But yeah, I just figured you all could come hang out with me today and we'll hopefully get some stuff done while babies are napping. So a few days ago, we were driving back from Texas and my mom called me on the phone and we were just talking about life because it had been a while since we had talked. And she told me that my Aunt Kelly wasn't doing very well. Now my Aunt Kelly, um, has always been a little bit of a free spirit. She kind of did whatever she wanted to do whenever she wanted to do it. She she went from place to place and um, she lived with us for a while when my family lived in Mexico. And at that time, I didn't speak the language very well. Um, I was going to school at a Catholic school and I wasn't Catholic and it was at that age where girls are just mean <laughs> um and i was i was pretty badly bullied and she her and my brother jacob were probably my two best friends sorry <laughs> during that time of my life um and she i'll always remember she loved to garden and she i never saw her doing like tons of research or reading up on it she just always kind of knew what the plants needed and and how to take care of them. She just had like this intuition for it. Freaking Stella, man. What are you doing over there? <laughs> She's always the comic relief. Um, but Kelly always just had this way with plants. And um, as you can probably tell from me being so emotional, my parents felt like they really needed to, to rush down to Mexico where she's still living. Um, she moved there after my grandpa Charlie died and she bought a house there. Um, and we've since obviously moved back and, and kind of moved on and she's been living down there by herself for the past couple of years. And we have some friends that were checking up on her and um, my parents just had this feeling that they needed to go and, um, and check on her because her friends were saying that she really, really wasn't doing well. She was a type one diabetic and, and kind of had some complications with that. So my parents, left that same day, stayed here overnight, um, traveled the rest of the way down to Mexico and turns out she really wasn't doing very well and they rushed her to the hospital and long story short, she ended up passing away and it was really sudden. No one in my family really expected it. Um, and this was, besides my, my uncle Matt that passed away a few years ago, this was the first really unexpected death in my family. So it's hit me pretty hard, especially since she had such a special role in, in me growing up. And so being out in the garden has just been really special. And I wanna make this spring garden really, really amazing for her. So anyways, that's why, <laughs> long story short, um, she had this just this awesome sense of fashion, not in the sense that she was always really stylish, but she just wore whatever the heck she wanted, which was a lot of floppy hats and chunky belts, and she made her own jewelry, so she always just had this awesome, cool jewelry and these flowy skirts and dresses, and I'll always remember her in a floppy hat, so I decided to, <laughs> to wear one while I was gardening today. Yeah, so sorry, I didn't, I don't want this to be a sad, <laughs> sad video or anything, but um, I just wanted to share that because she's been on my mind and on my heart a lot lately. So anyways, we have a lot of issues in the garden today. I'm going to show you what they are. 
Stella is the biggest one of them all, but there's some other ones too. The biggest and most pressing, pressing issue is literally Stella because I made this beautiful raised bed and she just comes and sits in it and I put up like this makeshift fence you can see that's not the prettiest and like that little thing there and I put up all these bricks and she still figures out a way to get in here so we're gonna have to come up with a solution oh my gosh look at him They must be migrating. I never hear geese here in Arizona. That was so cool. Um, anyways, by now my video on seed starting will already be out. So you've probably seen I've started pretty much everything, um, but I have three things that I wanna try to direct sow and that's melons, cucumbers, and radishes. And that's because they just don't do great when you transplant them from what I've heard. I've actually never grown any of those things, but um, just by doing some research, they do best when you just put them straight in the ground. So I need to get Stella out of there and put the trellis up so that I can grow my melons and my cucumbers. And then I also just wanna put radishes in the ground. So I probably could buy some nice fencing to try to keep her out, but I just like to use what I have on hand and I'd like to teach her and all the bulldogs really just to kind of leave the plants alone as much as possible. She's a puppy right now so she loves to explore, she loves to just be right wherever you are. So I want to just kind of train her not to get into everything so that when she's older, you know, we don't have to have these big ugly fences. So I think I'm just going to try to use what we have on hand. And then hopefully as the plants grow, I can be a little bit more meticulous and um, consistent about keeping her out of the garden beds. So I'm gonna use this as my door because I can just pull it right off. And then so far we've got <laughs> the freaking screen door. I've put stakes down to keep it up that way. And then I'm gonna kind of push it back so it stands up straight and put some stakes on this side of it too because as you can see, let me see if I can find the paw prints, she has already tipped it over and started walking on it. So I'm gonna put some more stakes in. Here she comes, little troublemaker. Now, because I know my sweet little Stella, I know that it's not beyond her to walk through this garden bed around this plant and back to her favorite sunny spot. So I'm gonna use the fencing that I uprooted from over here to line this bed, which will hopefully deter her from doing any of that nonsense. Okay, I'll show you what we got so far. It's not the prettiest. <laughs> and to be honest, I don't love it, but I need, need, need to keep Stella out of the garden. So this is one of those things that's not like for the aesthetics, but if I want my plants to grow and not get trampled on by bulldog paws, I need to do this. So here we go. I feel like the mean old gardener <laughs> from Peter Rabbit who like puts up all this elaborate stuff to keep the rabbits out of the garden. I really love that she comes to hang out with me, but just not at the expense of being able to plant stuff. <laughs> I'll show you her face right now. She's pretty mad at me. She's probably saying all mean, all sorts of mean stuff about me in her head. Stella, do you know that I love you? Do you know I love you, Stella? <laughs> Won't even look me in the eyes. I love you, Stella. Stella. I'm sorry. Yeah, she's mad. That's gotta be good, right? I don't know, I'm pretty happy with it. It's not the prettiest thing, but it was free. It took like less than 20 minutes and I have a feeling it will protect my plants. So check, check, check. I wanna use this trellis or this pallet to make a trellis for my cucumbers and for my melons. 
and I could just lean it up against the wall, but I want to try to figure out a way to split it in half so that I have melons on one side and cucumbers on the other side. So I'm going to drag it out and we'll figure out what we want to do with that. Eventually, my dream would be to have like trellises, like arched trellises um, out of um, like a metal material, but we just don't have high enough walls for that, honestly. And I don't want to <laughs> <them> all that <laughs> Got her. <laughs> <laughs> what I was saying is that I don't want to spend all that money here in this house when we might be moving sometime in the next year or so. So I'm thinking I might just split that trellis in half. I'm just going to see how hard it is to saw this. <laughs> so I've gotten decently far, but Daniel, who is always so smart with these things, thinks we should just drill a bunch of holes and then like break it. So I'll show you how far I got just for glory's sake. Also, I have to give a huge shout out to Daniel who always comes home for lunch from the office at the right time when I desperately need his help and advice. So he's just amazing. All right, 20 minutes later, we've got the pallet split, finally. Um, we have an electric saw that we probably could have used, but it needed a few different things and parts and stuff. And I'm the kind of person that if I wanna get something done today, I'm gonna get it done, whether it takes an hour of extra work or a ton of blood, sweat, and tears, it just has to get done. So we've got them split and I'm gonna go put them in the garden. All right, here they are. Looking pretty good. I can't wait. They're going to look so good when they've got plants on them. Um, it would be really cool actually if we had painted them, but I think it's going to work out really well. I'm not really in any hurry to put the string across. Um, I'll probably get some metal wire and do that once my plants are a little bit bigger, but for now I just want to get them in the ground. And I'll probably put my radishes over there where I had planted a little bit of um, flowers. And I think we'll be good. These were kind of a um, spur of the moment decision. I have actually never tried radishes before. I've never grown them, I've never eaten them. But these, as you can see, only take 24 days to mature. Um, and I know sometimes they're even faster than that, just depends on your condition. So I'm gonna just try these because anything I plant here, any radishes that I plant here, will be ready to eat before anything's ready to plant right here. So I can basically plant as many as I want. I'm just gonna give it a try. And then um, when I got these, I actually got these both at Sprouts. They're heirloom varieties, open pollinated and untreated. But I just, I wanted to put some flowers in the garden because my Aunt Kelly just always loved flowers. So that's kind of my, my way to honor her in this little space right here. So I'm going to do radishes, probably, I don't know, half here. And then I'll do some zinnias here. So you can see I've got about 20 different holes. They've all got one to two radish seeds in them. And I literally just gently cover them like that. Now this soil I know has been stepped on by me and by Stella. So I'm just kind of digging it up a little bit, making sure there's no rocks that have been tossed in or anything, um, just to make sure my seeds have the best chance of getting started in here. I don't know why, <laughs> it just feels right to put cucumbers on this trellis, melons, on the far trellis. I don't know if you can see, but I've kind of piled the earth up into a little bit of a mound, which will hopefully give the seed some soft soil to start out in. Um, and I'll probably do one, two, three seeds. The last thing I'm going to do is just go over to the ground 
where I planted the cucumbers and the melons and just spray it with a little bit of mist because, whoo, almost dropped you. Um, our hose head is actually broken, so I don't have the mist setting to use right now. And I wanna get that ground a little bit um, more wet. It got kind of dried out for having sat in the sun for so long. Um, and I can already kind of tell that's gonna be a spot in the garden that needs more water because it is all just sun all the time. Um, so I'm just gonna go and mist where I put the seeds down to give it enough moisture to hopefully wake, hopefully wake up those seeds. And then I think I'm gonna have to be done at that point because babies will be waking up and I wanna shower off first, so. Go in. I don't run out of water, there we go. Thank you guys for hanging out with me today. Um, it did me a lot of good to get out in the garden and not only get some stuff done that I needed to, but also just spend some time thinking and reflecting and, and doing something. There's this quote I love by Elizabeth Gaskell and it says, my precept is do something, sister. Um, do good if you can, but at any rate, do something. And I'm glad that I was able to get out here and not only do something, but hopefully do something good. And I'm so glad that you were able to join me today. Uh, thank you again for watching. I hope you learned something or are inspired by something. I would love it if you'd stick around because we have a whole spring season ahead of us. And I guess I will see you guys next time.